all rooms, maybe at the end of the hall, but uh, that's okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do with the crowd. Uh, my name's Jared Owen, I make YouTube videos for a living. I've been doing it now for a year and a half. Sometimes I feel like I don't know quite what I'm doing, but the numbers are going up, so I feel like maybe, maybe I'm on the, on the right track. Um, before I get too far in the, in the presentation, I do just want to mention, I, I have a little bit of a, a, a stutter that comes out, especially when I'm in front of crowds. So you hear me say words like com, 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 computer or sub, 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 subscriber. I just get stuck on that first syllable. So I just ask for your patience as I'm speaking here. There's probably going to be times I'm going to struggle with, with some words. So this is my, this is my YouTube channel under, under Jared Owen. I make animations on how things work, and I've found from the past that people don't always understand what I mean when I, when I say that. Um, so let me just give you a quick, quick preview of the types of things that I do. I like to do animations on uh, buildings, um, the inside of them, kind of how they're, how they're done. On my YouTube channel, I will narrate over the top of this and show um, kind of how, how things work. Um, if there's objects, I like to show what's inside of them. If there are springs, gears, levers, anything like that, I'm all over that. Of course, space, who, who doesn't love that kind of stuff? anything to do with NASA or, or getting to the moon. And every once in a while, I will do science fiction. So this is the inside of a lightsaber. This one was a lot of fun to make. That was kind of how, how it could work or how it works in, in that galaxy. I believe really strongly that you can have fun watching YouTube, but also learn something at, at the same time. I hope that's what you find on, on my channel. So just a, a, a little bit of an outline of what I'm going to go over, um, kind of my story, how I got to this, this point, my uh, background, my schooling. I like to give some be behind the scenes in YouTube, um, kind of some of the things I've learned there, and then Blender. B well, Blender's the 3D animation software that I use to create all these animations. And then at the end, uh, leave some time for, for questions. So when I was younger, uh, I really wanted to be an animator. Uh, I wanted to work for Disney or, or something like that. And these were some of, my, some of my favorite movies that, that I would watch. And I would watch the end credits and see those list of, of animators, and I would think, someday that's, that's going to be me. I'm, I'm going to be in, in, in there. This dream basically got me to where I'm at today. It's never really died. It's maybe taken a back seat, maybe changed, changed a little bit. Um, fast forward to high school, um, or towards high school, my dad and my older brother actually taught me how to code, and I really latched onto it. I love math. I love problem solving, anything, anything to do with, with that kind of stuff. Um, I went to school for com 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 computer science, and I absolutely loved it. Got a job as a software engineer after. And just to, just to iterate how much I love my job, I remember waking up on a Saturday one time being disappointed because I didn't get to go to work. So coding, coding is me. But at, at the same time, there's that animation dream that, that just wouldn't die. When I was in college, I did a presentation on open source software. And so I made a slide you know, with some of the ones that we all know of. But then there was this orange icon down here called Blender. I had never heard of it before, so I, I, I I looked it up, and for that presentation, I, I made a slide from some of the images that I've seen. And I w actually went through my old college files. This is the actual slide I, I used for that class. So these were some of the very first images that I had ever seen of Blender. And to me, this looked like something that Pixar would, would do. And I thought, hold on a sec. You mean this is free software? You mean I can download this right now? So that's, that's what I did. I, I took a break, and I, I downloaded Blender. And this is, this is what I saw. There's like this cube, and I like, clicked on a bunch of stuff, and I had no idea what I was doing. Um, unfortunately, there was no time. Um, uh, in, in college, uh, there were so many things, like you have, you have to study for this class, do this presentation. And so uh, I kind of put it on the back burner. In between sem 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 semesters, um, I was able to actually learn some stuff. And I was able to make this, this animation. This is my very first YouTube animation that I ever did. Um, I really like Star Wars. I, I model these pod racers. I kind of studied the camera angles. And yeah, I was pretty pleased with, with how it turned out. The, uh, th this is not the full animation. You can actually go see the full one if you go to my, my YouTube channel. But then, of course, school, school started again, and there was absolutely no time. Um, and so when I, when I finally got my software job, and finally there was a little bit more time in the evenings, there was no homework or anything like that, um, I started to learn Blender again. When you have a software job and you spend eight hours a day staring at a screen, what do you do when you get home at night? You stare at a screen some more. <laughs> So I started learning Blender, and it really, really grabbed me. I started spending um, two hours a day doing it. I would do it in the evenings, uh, but I wanted to spend time with my family, so um, most days I would actually get up really early in the morning to try and do two hours before I went to work. And I found tons of good YouTube channels. Um, there, are, there are tons of them out there. This is just a partial list of kind of some of the ones that I follow, uh, but they're teaching you how to, how to use Blender. Um, it took a lot of hard work. 
But I started to learn enough that I thought, okay, I want to put videos out on YouTube, but what do I, what do I make? Do I make silly animations? How, how would people find, um, find these animations? And so I came up with this idea to make animations on how things work. So this is one of the very f first animations kind of of how things work. I thought, okay, if people Google something like how big is the solar system, maybe I could be found on there. And at first, it was only friends that were really watching, friends and family. You know, I posted on Facebook. But over time, uh, the charts in YouTube actually started going up. You know, I was getting like 20, 30 views a day. I was like, somebody's watching this. This is actually pretty cool. Um, this video actually took off. Um, it, what, one day, it started getting like two or 300 views a day. And, you know, I was just, wow, what, what, what can I do with this? Um, so I'd heard that you can actually make, make money off of YouTube. Um, so I kind of did, did a little bit of reading, and there's some forms you got to fill out. And so I, I filled them out, and then when I log into YouTube, it showed me this. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's fine. So I kept checking. Every day I go back, I go back, and I said the same thing. One day, you'll never guess what happened. <laughs> <laughs> this, was, this was the most motivating penny I had ever made, like, period. <laughs> and if I could make one penny, maybe I could make two or three, or five, maybe I could make a whole dollar, who knows, maybe I could like um, go out to the movies you know, with, with the money that I made there. So I started coming up with, with ideas, racking my brain for anything I, I, I could think of. And so I started starting posting videos. These, um, all the ones that you see here didn't do fantastic, but I learned. I learned with every single one of them. I learned about animation, and I, I learned about uh, what people wanted to watch on, on YouTube, and which, which motivated me to, to keep going. Unfortunately, these animations take a long time to make, <laughs> especially when you have a full-time job and you're only able to put in two hours here, here or there. Uh, but I kept going and going, hoping that this would go somewhere, and it actually did. Um, I started getting emails saying, do you work for hire? And at the time, I, I asked my wife, I was like, what do I say to this? And she was like, yes, yes, you, 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 you work for hire. So I was like, okay. <laughs> started getting uh, emails for video licensing. They wanted to use some of my videos on their site and pay me a, a a yearly free, a, a, a yearly fee. It's like, hold on, I don't have to do any extra work, and you're going to pay me. Um, and then there was there was other opportunities. The YouTube AdSense started going up, and so it got me thinking. And one night, I, I leaned over to my wife and I was like, w "What would you think if I quit my full-time job?" She did what any reasonable person would have done, <laughs> and she said, "Hold on, you're not making enough to pay the bills. Um, not just that, but what about what about benefits if you leave your company? What about taxes? How how does that all work?" And so um, I started making a plan. We actually sold our, our home and went back to renting um, just so that we'd have a huge cash cushion. I thought, if I'm, if I'm going to do this, I want to be able to still go out on a Friday night and spend money, not have to just eat ramen noodles or beg family members for rent or anything like that. So, so we basically made a plan. But I also, realizing that if, if I quit my job, we dig into those savings enough, there would come a time when I need to basically throw in the towel and probably turn in my resume here at Clearwater. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm only halfway joking when I say that. <laughs> but I, I started reading books on business, because I'd heard a lot of businesses fail. I thought, well, why, why do they fail? How can I kind of steer, steer clear of some of those things? So this was one of my favorite books that I've read. There's kind of this myth that when you start a business, you have to dress up in a suit and tie, go to the bank, and beg for half a million dollars. But this guy shows you that that is absolutely not the case. You can start small. You can grow over, over, over time. One of the lessons, oops, too far. One, one of the lessons that I learned from this book, um, this, this little Venn, Venn diagram, my passion is 3D animation. And that kind of that sweet spot, uh, I was trying to figure out, OK, where, where do I build my, my business? Turns out YouTube is a pretty good place to do that. So we planned, and we planned, and I finally made that jump. Um, I quit my job. When you're used to money being put in the bank twice a month, and all of a sudden that stops, it's really, really scary. I don't know if anybody's, if anybody's had that um, opportunity here, but it's also really motivating. Every morning to get up, to, to, to get working, those eight hours in a day go by very quickly. Before you know it, it's, it's dinner time, and you're like, what did I even, what did I even do today? So I've, I've learned quite a bit. Um, I will just share, it's, it's been a year and a half. Our savings did dip a little bit, um, but I am definitely in the, in the green. And I, this is what I plan on doing for the for, for foreseeable future. So at, at this point, I'd like to show a little bit of be, behind the scenes in YouTube. I've learned a lot from growing a channel. There are, there are people out there that will tell you if you're going to grow a YouTube channel, you need to post once, once a week. Um, and that may be the case, you know, that's, that's best. But for an animation channel like mine, it's, it's not possible unless I was to lower that quality or to hire more staff, neither of which I was, I was willing to do. 
but I, I found other, other big channels out there that post like once, once a month, they get millions of views. And so I've kind of uh, learned, learned from them as well that you don't have to post that often if, if, if you can't. So up, up here, I just did a search for Eiffel Tower. This is one of my most recent videos that I've done. And you can see at the very top, um, there's th that top video there, there's a tiny little yellow square um, that says add on it. So what this guy's basically doing is paying YouTube to pro 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 promote his, his uh, video and, and trying to get views. You can definitely go this route, and there's reasons why you'd want to. But YouTube will actually pro pro promote your videos for free. If you, um, if you post good content on a, on a regular basis. And so, of course, first they will push out to your sub, 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 subscribers, but after that, they'll, they'll push out to anybody, like for this one, that's interested in Paris, or 3D animation, or travel, or something along those lines. They will, they will push that out to, to lots of people. And when I first started, when this first started happening to me, this was a video I did on the International Space Station. Um, this was, I think, two days after I posted this. You can see kind of the, those views going up. YouTube basically needs data. Um, when, it, when you first put it out there, it tries to figure out, okay, how many people are clicking on it? Are they watching all the way through? If, if that's the case, they'll push it out to people even more. Um, this is the Eiffel Tower video, and you can kind of see those views. When it first goes out, it kind of spikes, and then as they get data, it kind of goes up and down. Sometimes that's, that's really spiked. Sometimes people will put it on Reddit, or um, um, a blogger will pick it up, or something like that. It's really, really sweet to see those views kind of jump really fast. Um, these are the most recent videos that I've done. I've, I've learned that um, your title and your thumbnail, that is the doorway to your video. If you have like a dumpy thumbnail, even if you have like this awesome video, if you have a dumpy thumbnail, um, not very many people are going to click on that. Of course, once people actually click on it, you want them to stay through as, as long as, as possible. Um, YouTube gives you some graphs and, and charts. Um, this one kind of shows uh, that, that 14.3 million people were shown this thumbnail, and only 6.3% actually, actually clicked on it, which actually is pretty good. I'm told that um, once you get above like 10, 20, or even 30, if you, if you think about that, if one out of three people click on a thumbnail when it's shown and they watch it all the way through, that's, that's when you get a viral video, basically. That's when you get like 100 million views or something like that. Um, hasn't happened to me yet. Maybe it will in the future. <laughs> but it kind of has this funnel all the way down to how much watch time you have. So you obviously want to lead people to your video, get them to stay as, as long as possible, and then pre pre preferably get them to watch more of your of your videos. Here's, here's another chart that I like. It shows how long people basically watch your videos. And you can see there's a sharp drop off at the, at the very end there, which um, that's the part where the, the video's done and I'm basically saying, hey, I'm Jared Owen, come watch more of my videos. At, at that point, most people leave the video or click on, click on an, 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 another video. But if, like, let's say that sharp drop off was in the very middle of the video, you could go to that spot and figure out, okay, did I, did I say something? Or was I too slow? Was I not in, 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 in interesting? Or, or something like that. And you can, you can kind of figure out how to make your videos better be, because of charts like this. Of course, there's the, there's the usual triggers. Um, and then, of course, if you can get somebody that finds your video, if you can get them to go to your channel and watch more videos, um, it's awesome. There's a huge science to this. There are YouTube channels devoted to helping you run a, a YouTube channel. Um, these are the biggest guys that I, that I know of. Um, and they will talk about views. They'll talk about uh, what makes a video good. Um, it's a deep, deep topic, one that I'm, uh, I'll be the first to tell you that I know very little about. The more I learn, the more I realize how much there is to learn. So at, at this point, I'd like to show a little bit about Blender. This is the 3D animation software that I use. And if you didn't catch that earlier in my presentation, this is free. So tonight, instead of watching Netflix, you can actually go download this if you, if you want to try it out. <laughs> just, to, just to give you a tour of some of the things it can do. Um, 3D animation, or 3D, 3D modeling is one of the things it's used most often for. Um, it can also do sculpting. So just like you take a block of clay and sculpt it with your hands, you can do this in, in Blender. There are tons of tools to do this. Um, this is an area that I don't know a ton about, but I'm hoping to get better at. You can also do 2D animation. The most recent version of Blender that they just released, um, they've tried to beef up the features in this area, and it seems like it's working out, working out pretty well. Of course, 3D animation. The character here is from a movie called Spirit. They, they make these open movies with, with Blender to try and use the, f the features that Blender has, and even trying to push um, and de 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 develop more features in, in Blender. And then sim, 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 simulations are another thing Blender can do. So there's fire and smoke, um, uh, which is obviously pretty cool if you're going to make a plane crash or something. Cloth, so if things are 
um, waving in the wind or you just want to put a, put a tablecloth there and make it look well. Um, then there's also uh, fluid. So if you want to do water or, or even coffee or, 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 or something like that. And then physics. So you can see those blocks being knocked over by the ball. Um, if you were to animate all those blocks one by one, it would be really, really tedious. Uh, so Blender obviously helps out with stuff like that. You can do VFX with it. And you can Im 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 import your own footage and even put 3D um, animation on, on, on top of it. My favorite is Python. Um, for the first year or two that I did Blender, I, didn't, I, I knew Blender could do Python. I'd never done Python before. Um, but I wish I would have done it sooner. It is very, very powerful. Um, some of the people that I've learned, um, some of the you, 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 YouTubers that I've learned Blender from have actually flat out said, like, I don't know anything about Python. I don't want to know anything about Python. <laughs> um, they, like, want to stay very far away from it. Um, but I found it's very, 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 very powerful. And I want to show uh, kind of a walkthrough of uh, two of my videos that I use Python in. Blender released their um, version 2.8. And they've tried to focus on uh, the, the new, new, new user. Um, so they've scared a lot of people away with shortcuts or things that um, don't quite work the way you, you, you think they would. So they've tried with, um, with this new version to not scare away those first timers. So if you've tried Blender in the past, want to try it again, now is a good time. Blender also has its, its own building in the, in the Netherlands, and they actually have a full-time staff. I think there's like 10 guys there right now. Um, they have enough donations coming in worldwide that they're able to do that. So there's kind of this roadmap. They're trying to put more features into Blender. Um, it is absolutely, absolutely awesome. There's a conference that takes place once a year where people from all over the world go. One of these years, I'll, I'll probably go, but haven't yet. Just to show uh, some, some basic 3D modeling and some of the tools on the side there, you can, uh, there's, some, there's some gizmos that, that, that you can grab to show, to show how this works. And then, of course, there's shortcuts you can use. So you don't always have to um, click on a menu on the side. Um, if you ask me, like, where's the, where's the bevel tool or, or, or something like that, I probably wouldn't be able to tell you because I use the shortcuts so much just because it's much, much quicker. Um, the, there's kind of this um, men, men, mentality that you have one hand on the keyboard, one hand on the mouse. And if you ever have to take them off, that kind of slows you down. So I actually, th this is the mouse that I use because you can program the side buttons. If there's a shortcut that takes two hands or maybe you have to move your hand, um, you can go much, much quicker. Okay, so one, one concept I'd, I'd, I'd like to share. Um, when you're 3D modeling, it's um, usually in the view, viewport. So this is kind of the, the quick way that Blender will show you the images. And if you want to do like send a send a rough draft over to somebody, it's it's very quick to do. It'll only take my PC uh, maybe like five five minutes. When you want to make the final version, you have to render it, which is kind of like taking that final picture. So on my on my mach, 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 machine, there's uh, usually takes anywhere from 30 seconds to five minutes or so to render a frame. And now if you do the math there, 24 frames a second, and then over like six six minutes or something like that. It usually takes like a week to, to render some of these animations. Um, there's other options, though. You can pay a render farm. The more money you throw at it, the faster it'll get you it back. Um, but if you have family members that have good gaming PCs that are generous enough to let you use them, <laughs> it goes much, much quicker. <laughs> I had to, had to give a shout out there. <laughs> so at, at this point, I'd like to do a little bit of a, a live demo in, in Blender. And I'd like to show you how you, um, how you do basic animation. So when you open it up, you'll see this default cube. Um, and I'm going to show how to basically make this move. So you can, press G to, you can press G to grab and move that cube. And you can see the lo 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 locations up here, the x, y, and z, which are at 0, 0, 0. And you can actually drag these to, to move ar around. The properties are gray, which basically means that the user can, 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 can controls them. But if you want them to be animated, um, we, get, we have to give it some data. So down here, this is, the, this is the dope sheet at the bottom of the screen. And this is all of our animation data for the scene, which right now it's, it's blank. So if I play this animation, that cube doesn't move, nothing, nothing happens. If we, if we want to give it some, some information, let's say at, at frame one, we want to tell the cube that it needs to be at 0, 0, 0. So we come up here and press I to in, in, insert a, a keyframe. It turns yellow, and a keyframe is added down here. You can see that. When we move it over, uh, when it turns green, it basically says, I'm being animated, but I'm not on a keyframe right now. And so we have to give it one more keyframe if it's basically going to move. So let's come over to frame 50, and let's, let's actually move that cube somewhere. So I'm going to move it up here. 
you can see how it turns orange, which says I'm being animated, but I'm out of sync with the animation. So if we move keyframes, it'll snap back to 0, 0, 0. So let's move that cube back, and this time let's press I to insert a keyframe. And now we have two keyframes. So if we play our animation, that cube is actually moving. And you can add as many, as many keyframes as you want. Let's come over to frame 100, and let's maybe move it over here. So now when we play our animation, you can see our cube basically, basically moving. And so the dope sheet is one way to view that information, but you can actually come over here to the graph editor, and uh, we can see that information visually. Let me size this up a little bit. So you can see we have three that they call them channels, and you can see um, we have red, red kind of green, and then blue to show visually how that, how that cube is moving. Um, and you can actually come over here, and we can actually change. You can actually drag these and change how that animation looks. Um, so it's very, very, very powerful. There's lots of different ways to view that animation data. To me, this information, I, I, I think of it as code, just from my background. And with your code, even if it's not text-based, you want your variables well-named, um, you want it clean, organized, and you don't want dead code, right? Um, you don't want somebody to have to go through and kind of wade through all the stuff that doesn't matter. So let's say we only want it to move in the X low, low, low location. Um, we don't really need the Y and the Z. So you can actually come down here and delete those channels. So now we only have, now we only have one curve, and it's only moving in the X. So uh, lots, of, lots of different ways to organize your data. It, it doesn't matter too much at this point, but you can imagine if I had a, a, a hundred objects, each with them animated, that's a lot of data. You want to organize it the, the very best that you can. So one other thing I'd like to show here. Um, we have a keyframe at frame one and then a keyframe at frame 50. In between there, Blender basically has to decide what to, where that cube should be. Um, and you can see there's kind of this curve in, in the middle there. We can actually take that and you can change the shape of that curve. So I'm going to come over here and grab the handles. And you can see that curve's changing a little bit. So now that cube starts out slow and then moves fast at, at the very end. And you can even do some pretty, pretty funky things. If we change the shape here and now play this, it'll go backwards, overshoot, and then come back. So just with two keyframes, you can kind of change how that, how that looks. So one, one other thing I'd like to show here, there's keyframes. Um, one of the other things I find really powerful is something called, something called drivers. Um, and uh, the best way that I know how to show this is by adding another object. And what we want to happen is I'm going to add a driver to the x lo 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 location. And so when I move this cube in the x, I basically want the sphere to follow. I, I want the x to listen to the x on, on the cube. And so the way we do that is by adding adding a driver here and have some settings. And once we set that all up, you can see it turns purple, which says I'm, I'm being driven. If I come over here and try and drag that, Blender won't actually let, let me change it. It says, hey, somebody else is supposed to do that. And so if I come over to the cube and I move it now, you can see that sphere actually follows. And there's tons of, tons of um, options to customize this even more. Um, there's another graph that you can view. And then if we move around, if we move around some of these, now that sphere will follow, but it's, it's, it's no longer a one-to-one. One, one one. You can have any property listen to any other property. It doesn't have to just be X listening to X. You can even make your own custom properties. This is something that I've found very, very powerful. So we come over here and we say add, and we can make a custom property and say let's just call it move. Right now, this property doesn't do anything because there's no drivers set up to it. But when, um, if there are any drivers, this is, um, this is where it gets really, really powerful. So I set up a, a few things here just to show you how this, how this kind of works. So I have a little door here and a property called open door. And when I drag that, you can see it kind of open, open and close. Um, and you, you, can, you can animate these properties just like you can animate, animate something else. So if I have this spring here, um, drag the slider. You can see that spring going, going in and out. And then just to show how you can do multiple properties. So there's one called, I can move that switch back and forth. I can push a button in and out. And then I can even move, move those gears. And so um, very, very powerful to make these properties and then animate the properties because it's easier to understand on your dope sheet what you're actually doing. Your, your code is more um, readable, basically. And so one, one more thing I wanted to show, here's a little monkey head. Now you see it, now you don't. So I use that all the time in my animations. So uh, keyframes and, and drivers, two of, the, two of the tools I use to animate, basically. All right. So at this point, I'd like to show, 
I'd like to show uh, kind of a kind of a walkthrough of two of the animations that I've done, and uh, this was one that I did on a grand piano, and I, I played in in high school, um, but I, I I knew kind of how those hammers work. If, if you've ever seen like in a music shop, you seen like you you press a key and the hammer comes up. I didn't know how the pedals worked. There's three pedals on the bottom side of the piano, and I th and uh, after doing some quick googling, I couldn't find a lot of information. So what I actually did is went over to my local church building, um, and I climbed underneath the piano. And then I had my, my wife come, and she uh, pressed, pressed those pedals. And I kind of watched what, what did those levers do under, underneath there. And these are the actual cell phone pictures that I took that helped me make the animation. Um, so I was able to figure, figure most of it out. I did have to get up um, on, on top of the piano, kind of look down, and then go underneath. It, it, I think we back, went back there like three times just to make sure I, I, I got it right. Um, here's the, um, here's the, all the keys pulled out. And so you can see when those keys are pressed, there's all the, ha all the hammers in the background that basically go up and strike the strings. That's what makes the noise on the piano. And so this is kind of a side view of just one of those keys. So when you press that, that white part, the hammer will come up and, and, and strike that string. And here's kind of a GIF showing how that happens. Um, drivers that I showed you earlier in, in Blender, I use that here. So there's basically four kind of levers that have to respond to whatever the key lever does. So all I have to do now is just animate that key lever, and the drivers make everything else work. It's a way to basically automate what happens. Um, so for me, that made it much, much easier. Um, here's kind of that piano um, all, all animated. As I was doing this animation, I thought, how cool would that be? I always have something, some music in, in the background, which for this one, obviously, piano music makes the best choice. But how cool would that be if the music in the background, if the if the keys on the piano were actually playing the same notes. I thought that would be pretty cool. So I found a song in the YouTube audio library, uh, which is a place where you can go to basically get free music. So you can still, like, you can't use a um, copyright song and, and still make money off of your video. So the YouTube audio library has some stuff that you can use for free. So I found a piano song in there that I liked and um, played this by ear. Um, my wife helped quite a bit, <laughs> uh, but I was able to basically figure it out. Um, I'm pretty sure I got all the notes right. Not, not one, one, one hundred percent positive. The trick was, how do I get it into Blender? How do I animate all these keyframes? So I made a, a syntax. Um, a hashtag is basically a comment, and you can see three comma-separated values there. Um, the first one is measure, measure info. So basically, when to play the keynote, and then the middle, that that Q and the E, is basically how long to play that note. And then the last one, you have notes A through G, and then which octave it is, and whether it's flat, sharp, or natural. And so now at this point, all you need to do is write a Python script, right? Pretty easy. Actually, it took a lot of trial and error to make this work, but um, I think it's this, let's see, what is it, 400 lines of code? And you can see that dope sheet down be, be, below, all the white dots there, um, those were all generated by Python. Um, I think it would be possible to do this by hand, but it would have been very, very tedious to basically go through and, and, and figure this out. Once I had it all coded up in Python, um, then I kind of needed to scale those to match the, match the music. And then this was the final product. I'm pretty sure I missed a few keys here or there. Or the sp speed wasn't right, but I was, overall, I was pretty pleased with, with how that turned out. One other animation I'd like to show, this is one of those pullback toy cars. And so it's got this little gear system, um, and it's all powered by this tiny little spring in the middle there. So it moves those gears, which then makes the car move, move back and forth. So the tricky part for this um, was, the, was the torsion spring kind of has this twisting motion to it. And in Blender, there's, there's simple ways to bend things. You know, you can kind of um, bend something very simply. But I thought for this, there's kind of this spiral motion. And I, was, um, I went through a lot of brainstorming to try and figure out how, how can I basically get that shape. And so after, after a lot of head, head banging, this is what I, what I came up with. So when you are doing character animation, you add an armature. Um, so you have your, your static mesh, your, your character mesh, which doesn't move by default. But then you add this system of bones in there, and once you get it all set, set up right, then you move this system of bones and the mesh follows. This is how you do character animation. This is how it's done at, at Pixar and, and other places like that. Um, armatures are useful not just for character animation. It's useful for anything that needs to bend. So when you make an armature, you make this kind of chain of bones. And then 
once you have this all set up, then you, when you bend them, all the ones on top of them basically follow. And you can create whatever, whatever shapes you want, basically. And so for this, um, for this piece of metal, I basically made one long, um, one long strip and then added 40, 40 bones to that. And um, it gets really tedious because to make that um, spiral motion, you need to have um, different angles for each and the, the angle kind of changes for each bone. So I was able to use a lot of math to then finally um, bend this spring into the shape. This took, oh, took a, lot of, a lot of trial and error. But at this point, I, those 40 bones, they're each set up with a driver um, over to one property. So 40 bones listening to one, one property. Um, that either needs to be a negative one, zero, or a one. So when it's at zero, it's basically in that neutral position. And then when you move that slider over to one, it winds up, and then back at zero, and then negative one. And so obviously this was a lot of, a lot of Python code as, as well, but I learned a ton when, when doing this. So here's the, here's the final finished product. Kind of see how that coils back up. So if there's anything I've learned, and I'm still learning this every day that I make animations, Python and drivers are very, very powerful. They're your friend. I don't know how people do animation with, 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 without it. You're, you're kind of limited to either buying add-ons or just doing things that are a little bit more simple, um, which I'm not satisfied with doing. So uh, what's, what's next for me? Um, I have so many ideas for videos. I have a, a list of videos that keeps growing. I have to pri pri prioritize that list kind of by what, what I'm interested in, but also what I think will do well on, on YouTube. This is what I plan on doing for the, for the for, for, for foreseeable future. Um, I want to learn more about how animation works, more about how the world works, and just have fun doing what I love for a living. So I'll do what I do at the end of all of my YouTube videos. <laughs> when you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see a button like this. If I've earned it, go ahead and press that button, and then hit the bell so that you know when I post new animations. Thank you, DevCon, for having me here. <laughs> so I think we have a few minutes for questions. Is that right, Jolly? Yep. If anybody has questions. I'm curious, are you on a, like a secret service watch list because you did the, the blowout of the White House? Or, I'm, I'm curious how yeah, you yeah. get your information about you know, things that you don't have personal experience with, like looking yeah. at the piano. How do you get your data? So the, the White House one is actually very, oh yes, yes, so he's asking how, how I get my data, um, and he asked kind of about that White House, you know, if I'm on a watch list. Um, I get comments, I don't want to say daily, probably, um, probably two or three times a week, somebody like in all caps, they're like, this video should not be on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> or like people saying, hey, they're going to help out terrorists. Um, all that information is public. I just put it in like a 3D animation. There's a site called, I think it's whitehousemuseum.org. Mu, mu, it gives you all the maps. I basically put them into Blender, traced it, and made my own layout of it. Yeah, so it's, it, it's all out there. But as far as kind of that, that other data, um, lots of Google searching. Uh, patents are sometimes helpful, um, like for the com, 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 combination lock that I did a little while ago, um, a, a patent of a combination lock. Um, I'm also getting a little more bold to contact contact people. You know, at first when I would reach out and say, my name's Jared Owen, I run a channel with 500 subs, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't really get much response, but when I say three, 350,000, I get a little bit more of a response, which is very nice. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think, there's some, yeah, that's, the, that's mostly how I, how I get my data, but I also went over to a, a lock shop and asked them to cut it open for me, and at first they, like when I called, I think he thought I was trying to like break into something. I was like, no, 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 I just want to see how it works. It's not locked on anything. And they asked me like three times, you just want us to cut it open? That's it? I was like, yes, I just want to see how it works. <laughs> so, yeah, that is, does that answer the question? Yeah. Do you mind if I ask a follow-up? Sure, question? sure. How much time do you read? Do you allocate a certain amount of time to research a topic? Uh, it seems like it could go on a long time. Yeah, I've started to outsource to, to family members. Oh, yes, sorry. I gotta, um, so how, how, much, how much time do I basically spend re, 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 researching these kinds of things? So I started um, kind of... Uh, um, out, uh, outsourcing that to basically saying, hey, I'm going to make a video on this, um, and having somebody kind of put together images and, and, and things like that. And so um, I would say probably like 25% of my time is, is research. So, yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other, any other questions? Oh, lots of them. Let's go right here in the front. What's your favorite first Blender resource? First Blender resource. 
That's a good question. Probably, probably YouTube, I kind of have my favorite channels that I follow, which most of them are on that list in, in the slide there. Um, yeah, that's probably the, the first place I would go. Let's, let's go what, way in the back there. I get interesting comments all the, all the time. Um, oh, yes, sorry. I've got to repeat the question. What's the most in, 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 in interesting comment that I've ever gotten? And I think um, I, got, I got a whole, I mean, I, I think it was a whole school class. It's hard when people say who they are on YouTube. You kind of just have to take the word for it. But I got a school teacher that, that commented and said, we, we love your videos. And then she had about 10, um, 10 students there and each of their comments, which was really cool. And one, w one guy basically said, I want to do YouTube when I grow up. So that was, I, I think that's probably the one. I, I took a screenshot of that and saved it. It was pretty cool. Yeah, right here. So uh, do you build all of your models by hand, or how much do you import from open source yeah. OK, so the, the question was, how much of these 3D models do I actually do myself? And most of them are, are all me. Um, I've tried to, like if the topics are completely different, I can't really reuse much. Um, but there, is, there are some sites out there where you can purchase models. So I did one on the International Space Station. I started modeling it. And after about half hour, I was like, OK, if I want this to look photorealistic, this is going to take a month to do the research to figure out how to make it work. Uh, but I purchased it um, online, and the, the license was such that I could use it on YouTube. And so I will try and do stuff more and more, especially if I only have to spend a little bit of money and it saves me four weeks of time. You know, excellent. Uh, but most of the ones you see, I, I've done basically all me. So I guess a follow-up question. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel it is like a source of pride to make a model yourself? Like even though you could probably save some time you know, outsourcing that to somewhere else, but does that bring you kind of the satisfaction? Yeah, so the, the question was basically, do, do I get a sense of pride doing it all myself? And I, I think, yes, I, I would like to say that, hey, everything on my channel is all me. Uh, but at some point, it's not practical. And I'm able to put out more videos if I, if I purchase and things like that. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I consider myself a very motivated person. Oh, sorry, the, the, the question was how, how do I basically work by myself? I consider myself a, a motivated person, but also um, it does get, does get a little hard sometimes. I think there are some afternoons where I get burnt out. It's only like 2 in the afternoon. And the, you know, I have no boss over me telling me, hey, you have to work. You have to put in your hours. So the tem tem temptation is there to basically, hey, I'm, I'm done for the day. I can do whatever I want. Um, I think there's, there's also the freedom more to if I don't want to work in the afternoon, you know, I, I can push, out, push that off and do it in the afternoon, or do it in the evening, or do it on weekends, or, or something like that. So I think just shifting around when I work, I don't quite have to do that 8 to 5. Um, but putting up a YouTube video, and then seeing all those views come in, seeing all the comments, basically people saying, hey, I, I really like your stuff, that is motivating. That gives me extra juice to basically keep, keep going. But yeah, working, working by yourself, is, it's a problem that I'm still trying to solve. Um, I kind of miss the whole coworkers. Hey, let's all go down to lunch um, at the same time. I'm still trying to trying to solve that problem by like reaching out to people and and, and stuff like that. So, right there. Have you ever gone to VidCon before or thought about doing a collaboration? Yeah, yeah. So the the question was, have I ever gone to to Vid VidCon? Um, I haven't gone to VidCon, um, but I I may in the future. I'm kind of told that that's a place where fans um, kind of kind of meet up with their favorite people on, on, on YouTube. Um, there is, there's another one called Vid, Vid Summit um, that's only for creators. Basically, it's, it's not for the fans. They basically go over all this all the stuff with YouTube, how to get more views and stuff like that. I'm actually going to that next week. I don't really know what I'm doing. But um, if I'm going to be a YouTuber, I, I better try and, try and do that. So um, yeah, I, I have thought about going to some of those, some of those places. How much, how much time? Out of time. OK, thank you, everybody, for coming. If, if there's more questions, you can always come up and ask.